tried to download the app. It had like a a, a fee. No, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's free. Um, but then I don't know. Hi, oh. uh, there's uh, our teacher. As our fearless leader. As our fearless leader. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Wow. Hi. Good to see you. I haven't seen you since a closing a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Marcus. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. May, Mr. May. Yeah, this is great to see you guys again. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Sorry to be late. Uh, hey, Aaron. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, 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 Aaron. <laughs> hey, All right. Yeah. <laughs> There's Ben. Yeah. Oh, wow. Man, technology. Somebody else joining. Uh, got, Della. got Della Good there. That's Della. Hello. Now, yeah, great. Yeah, sorry, I had a call from the bank. Uh, you know, the the Small Business Administration doing the loans and uh, for nonprofits and businesses. So uh, just SHBI submitting application to them and they called like literally five minutes before saying they're still working wow. tonight. And so after we get off, I'll still try to get some more information. That don't sound like bankers hours. No, they, <laughs> I, said, I said, are you still going to be there at eight o'clock? And she said, we may be tonight. And they were trying to wrap up all the loans that they had in hand. Hey Aaron, I like the I like the painting back there behind you. Is yeah, this in, in like, your office or where are you? Um I'm in, in my room. dining room. Okay. It's <clears throat> funny. It's like pointing at him. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is, my ears out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got he, he got him on both sides of your head there. So <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah. This is the great the great thing about doing it by Zoom. We get to see a little bit of everybody's home, except I give you just blank wall, so that's all you get here. Yeah, but everybody else, Marcus in your study, I guess that y'all study there. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome. This is where I do my damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the damage gets done. <laughs> yeah. I imagine a lot of ministry out of there. Well, uh, Bob going to make you, Bob and Debbie going to make you unmute it. Uh, how is Liam, the grandbaby? So you missed the showing of the pictures part. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You got he's good. Show he's doing very, very well, and Mom is good, and they're, they're kind of settling into routines. Thank you for asking. He is a week and a two days old now. Wow. <clears throat> Still, probably any plans to see them are on hold for a bit. Y'all don't know anything right now, do you? No. We're, we're either one way or the other, we'll get we'll get there, or they'll get here yeah. as soon as travel is permissible. I'm going to reshow the one picture so you get the. This is him teaching his first sermon on, on the day he came out. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Already preaching. That is adorable. I think, I think he's got a little Pentecostal in him. I'm not sure. Using, <laughs> using his hands. I like that. Right. All right. Well, so good uh, to get to see some new ones this week. Uh, you may not have seen the uh, first class email that I sent out not too long ago. And so I mentioned that next week, uh, don't, we won't do this one by Zoom because I want to do the first class by Zoom. And I know theoretically we could do both back to back. And I know when we're at Berean, we do it that way. But I just felt a little more hesitant to impose on a number of you for first class and second class. Of course, you would have the option to, to uh, sign out if you, you know, you couldn't. Um, let me see, I'm still thinking just the first class, but if uh, 
the Lord speaks to me in a dream this week to do them both back to back while well, I'll let you know and <laughs> they come back to go ahead and do both of them. But, uh, well, uh, very good. Let's go ahead and uh, begin, use our time here. Uh, Aaron, would you pray for us as we begin our study? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just uh, come before you giving you uh, thanks again for the day, giving you thanks for your protection, your provision, your love, and mercy and grace. And Lord, we come right now as uh, brothers and sisters, as a family, to, to learn of your word. And we thank you for uh, technology and this opportunity that has opened up for us to uh, interact and see one another and to encourage one another just by uh, the smiling faces and the sharing of pictures. Uh, and uh, to hear the laughter, uh, Father God. Yes. Amen. 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 You bind uh, every distraction, every hindrance, and that you uh, open our ears and heart to receive the lesson that you have prepared today uh, for us through uh, Kirk. And that will you bless him? Uh, will you give him a fresh anointing, Heavenly Father? Allow him to pour out in this time period all that you have given to him for us uh, that we may receive it. Lord, I, I pray for any needs, any wants, any hurts. Yes circumstances. Uh, I pray for provision. I pray for protection. Pray for healing and deliverance, Lord. I pray for peace Amen. of mind, yes. knowing that you are in sovereign control, even Amen. in this time, that you are working this out for, the, for our good and for your glory. Amen. Heavenly yes. Father, we just thank you uh, for being uh, such a loving God. We thank you for being a present God in these times. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Hey, you know, if you keep this up, you might make a good preacher. One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. Amen. Yeah, so good. Hey. Oh, there's David. Hey, David, welcome. Hey, David. Hey, how you doing, Eric? Good. Right. How you doing, buddy? Hey, all right. <laughs> What's all that? <laughs> yeah. That Stay at good. home and have nothing to do but grow a beard. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, go to the barbershop. Right? But, yeah. Uh, I was camping with my brother about two, uh, two weeks ago, or about three weeks ago, and we didn't, I didn't, sh he doesn't shave, you know, and I didn't when we was out there and I just said, you know what? I'm starting to kind of kind of like this and I'm just letting it go. It looks I'm, good. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. I'm Never just making the canvas. I'm gonna I'm gonna detail it, you know, once I get it all set up. <laughs> <laughs> it started to grow on you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well open up. I, I took a quick picture of the screen as when you started praying, Aaron, and I realized, no, that's not a very good time because I had the tops of everybody's heads. So. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's bowing. <laughs> so I got another one now of everybody's face. Well, I'll open up to 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> and... Uh, we finished up chapter four last week, but I'm going to go back and hit two quick highlights, the beginning and end of chapter four, uh, just to see as you've ruminated on it, maybe some this past week, if, if there's any further reflection, because uh, all of it's rich, and we'll have to keep going, because uh, yeah, five especially is really rich tonight. We'll probably try to do five, six, and seven. Uh, but in four, the two passages that uh, I wanted us to reflect on just a bit more, uh, right, <clears throat> I was looking, in earthen vessels, y'all help me out, I'm sorry. It's uh, seven. I was thinking, I was looking near one, but verse seven. We have, three. we have this four, seven. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not us. Because uh, I feel like that one can have a lot of practical help and benefit for us in our lives if we really absorb that. And then to just finish up briefly, 
with another reflection at the end with verse 17. Our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So first, verse 7, the fact that we have this message of Christ, this good news of Christ, uh, in jars of clay. Uh, just any responses from any of you on uh, how that has helped you in the past? No, Ben, last week you, we lost you before this point, and so you weren't there for that uh, reflection. But uh, the significance to you of having the good news of Jesus in these jars of clay, even as they develop problems and as we get older, any, any further thought or reflection on that? I, I think for me, one of the, the, uh, the really neat parts is where he talks about, we, we have this treasure in these jars of clay. And then later on, you're gonna talk about, you know, this being in this tent, but wanting to be out of this tent so that we can be uh, with Jesus in, in our heavenly tent uh, and type the separation. And, you know, of course, death uh, is, is a separation, the separation of the spirit from the fleshly body. Uh, that's, that's physical death. But for us, we don't, we get we, we just get to go live the next life it's just jumping from one to the next and i'm thinking about that you know and, and paul's statements about longing to be shed of this one so that he can go on to the next is that to me was it's just really encouraging because you know as i begin to really work on myself mm. to get to the point of maturity that I can really be looking forward to making the transition out of this tent to the heavenly one. Yeah. Man. Hey, um, yeah. I personally reflect on this uh, verse. I, I always, me, I, I'm humbled by God to know that he would use a person such as me, an infallible, perishable, wicked man such as myself to, uh, uh, to uh, at times be anointed with his power to share uh, the gospel of Christ. You know, I, I think it's where Paul's touching on this is, you know, he, t he uh, imperfect people, fallible, and he dwells in and fills us with power to share the greatest message of all, especially like during times like this, I just got to share on Sunday and, and just to think that um, if we allow God's spirit to work in us, we have uh, the hope that so many people are desperately looking for inside of us. And Ben, even agreeing with you too, knowing that one day that I'm going to get to take off this perishable and put on the imperishable, but while yet in this perishable body, um, I can still be used by God. Um, yeah. The gospel. Yeah. And it's yeah. his, and, and, and he does the work and he empowers me to do the work. And, he blesses me, and that and that's the part that helps keep me uh, even killed and focused. That it's not of my own and not of myself, because this body wouldn't do it. This flesh wars against that spirit, but because the spirit of God is so strong, I'm, I'm able to. Yeah, yeah, very good. And uh, he also, I was looking at the verse just after. He goes on to say that we're troubled, troubled on every side, yet not this despair. The stress it just shows us that when we are so concreted in Christ, it makes a big difference in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I like the uh, the beginning of the verse where Paul tells us that when he says we have this treasure mm -hmm. in earthen vessels. Come on. That that our bodies and our lives that God has given us is a treasure and. Uh, in an earthen vessel, vessel uh, that the excellence of the power may be of God first and not us. That we mm -hmm. need to always put God first. What he's given us is a, a treasure and a body that is not about us, but it's about the power of his 
excellence Man. as being God. Yeah. And God by itself. Yeah. <clears throat> Very good. Mm -hmm. And not, I didn't want to interrupt Della. I couldn't, you know, it picks up on any sound and begins to uh, indicate that you're talking. Did you start to say something, Della? No, I didn't or, say anything. All right. <laughs> uh, not yet. Yeah, I just you thought something and it picked up yeah. on your be careful. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> this isn't the final word on it, but because we'll have to move on. Um, just wanting us to dig a little deeper there because uh, it does, I think Paul's writing that intending for it to give us some peace about our lives here and now. Uh, we, we always have that great hope of life after death with Jesus, but all of us knowing that eternal life begins here and, here and now. Mm -hmm. well, what, is the, what is the eternal life that you, know, that you and I have right now in these bodies? And no matter how many difficulties, uh, you know, problems these bodies may develop, that we, it's still a treasure, as you said, Marcus, that there's a, a treasure that, that we have. And, and I think one, one other reflection about it is, uh, I keep an eye on the, it telling me that sometimes our internet connection gets strained. And so uh, I, I think I would know if you're not uh, hearing me well on that end. But jars of clay. And so there is no earth and vessel that is not flawed. And you go back to, you know, the, the potter in the, in, the the clay the the potter there and in, in the old testament uh, prophets and you know vessels are flawed and yet god still uses all of us as flawed vessels so every one of us uh no matter how flawed we are we still have this treasure of christ because after all you know it isn't about us and that's hard for us to it's hard for us to let that really sink in that it's more about Christ in us than it is about us ourselves. But we're people, he understands, and we have hang-ups, we have insecurities, and, um, and he's not as impatient with those things as we are, even in ourselves. Uh, be, all, be, be patient with all that is unfinished within you and within me. And I think this verse helps with that. Uh, to show that it's of God, it's not of us, uh, no matter, he loves us with our imperfections, not in spite of them, uh, because our imperfections have his glory to shine through. And you know, you've, you've heard it, like any lamp stand or a cracked vessel, if there's a light inside, it shines through the, through the cracks. And so even our imperfections, uh, the, the light of Christ shines through, you know, the imperfections in us. Um, I know that he's just a whole lot more at peace with us sometimes than we are ourselves. Amen. And just wanting to us to be encouraged by that. And then jump on to uh, 17, our light and momentary troubles. And now Paul, for Paul to say that, you know, with a mouthful. <laughs> Because yeah. it was, and we'll, we'll hear, you know, a recitation of some of them here soon, and it's a lot, but light and momentary uh, are achieving an I eternal like glory, so. a weight of glory, as I understand it, the Hebrew, you know, for glory, uh, kabod, is like a, a weighty thing, the weight of God's glory. Uh, maybe Isaiah in the throne room scene in Isaiah 6, you know, he falls down because of the weight of the glory of God. And so light, Paul's contrasting, at least in the Hebrew, it would probably, I mean, I know it was written in Greek, but in Hebrew thought, the contrast would probably come through a little more clearly. He's saying light afflictions and a heavy weight of glory that, uh, the things that we're going through, what we will reap when we, you know, when we look back, it'll be like, oh my, the weight of this glory so far outweighs, you know, the, the burdens that I went through. Now, somehow, 
that has to strengthen us in the meantime when we're when we're feeling weighed down by the struggles and right now for some it very well could be heavy financial mm-hmm. you know uh, right. burdens because of the the shutdowns uh, and that, yeah Aaron I was just going to say uh, that ties in with Romans where he says in Romans I know it's like verse 17 or Romans 8, 17 or 18, where he says that the sufferings that you endure or the things that you're going through are nothing compared to the glory that God wants to show in, in your life. And, and, uh, and you think about it, it's one of those things that helps keep, keep us level. Even like you said, like uh, some of us um, um, financially have taken cuts and stuff because of COVID. And, uh, you know, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who tomorrow holds. There's this peace that never trials. I, I always believe, uh, especially, uh, you know, I always consider myself a baby in Christ. Uh, and, and there's nothing I haven't been through. Loss, hurt, um, conflict that, that God hasn't already got me through. And if I continue to rely on God and know that uh, he's in me, he's with me, like you said, no affliction is, and like you said with Paul, for him to say light affliction with the stuff that he goes through compared to the stuff that I think I go through, <laughs> right? Yeah. But he knows that God got him through that and God's going to continue to get him through. You know, I think we're at a disadvantage because if I understand scripture, right, I believe Jesus showed Paul, you're going to go through it. And Paul still said, let's do it. Yeah. You know, I wonder how many of us would do that if we saw all the flick affliction and persecution that we'd go we we'd have to go through but even though god doesn't show us he shows us through his word and through all that he's going to get us through like this don't don't pay i i always say i like to say don't believe your lying eyes because what you see is not the whole picture yeah right and if you don't see a whole picture you cannot tell me what's going on and god goes there's so much going on around you that you don't see, but I got it. So I keep my eye on Christ, and I know he's not on the cross. Yeah. He, so whatever thought it can hold him down didn't, so it won't be able to hold me down. I, that's just my yeah. input. No, that's, that's good. And to some degree, I mean, this, wouldn't, this analogy would probably break down. You said you keep your eyes on Christ, and he's not on the cross now. But to some degree, we are, you know, when, like when Jesus says, Matthew 16, if you would follow me, take up your cross days. And so, you know, there, there is a, a degree to which we, we're not on it in the same way that he is. But it's like Paul says in Colossians that, that he, Paul is still going through some of the sufferings of Christ. So the cross still factors into our lives. And we have the faith, we're inspired by the fact that Jesus is, you know, has overcome the cross. Right. And we will, but it would help us to know, okay, the cross here is part of our journey. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, yeah, because I definitely meant that, like, in the right. cross, pick up your cross and follow me. For he that loses his life for my sake, though he may die, he shall truly live. And that's what I think about when I think about the cross and I say that Jesus is on it. He carried his and it killed him, but he got up from it. I carry mine and it persecutes me. And in some ways it feels like it kills me, but I know, I know that I know that I will rise from it. That, that, that's all that it encompasses for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I definitely. Oh, no, no I, didn't, I didn't understand you as uh, omitting that, but just thinking, yeah, that dawned on me more clearly that time. Amen. Um, Okay, so it's telling me this is the first time that uh, it's actually warning me that it will end in 10 minutes. So uh, hold on right there, right quick, uh, because all the other times it's gone right up to the, uh, to the 40 minutes and then uh, just said, hey, we're gifting you with extra time and all I need to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead right now if I can see. Uh, I don't think uh, that 
uh, it will take me, I don't think there's a lot of information that I have to fill out here. Cause if I have to redo it, um, it would take me a bit of time. We would lose. Uh, it, it did. I was on a meeting on Friday and it did that to us. But what we did is just log back in with the same right. number. Oh, right. you were able That's to right. just log back in with the same link? Yes. Okay. That's what we did. All right, great. Thank awesome. you. And forget that. <clears throat> Because it would take me just if a minute to get out the building information. So if it shuts us off, uh, uh, obviously you can have class. I set it up where there's no waiting room, so you come right back in since y'all all beat me here to begin with. But I'll I'll get right back on too. Well, thank you for that uh, reflection. I really want that to help us, uh, you know, to benefit us right where we are in the middle of all of this stay at home stop in the middle of recognizing our own imperfections. It's just that over the last few years, as I have come to be at peace with my imperfections and, mm -hmm. and not using that as a license for sloth, you know, to be a spiritual couch potato, but yeah. you <laughs> help me to, you know, to really love myself and know that my father isn't perturbed with me, that he's proud of me, uh, and he works through those imperfections. It really has helped me to just have a greater sense of peace. Mm. And um, hopefully, uh, a companion of peace is joy. The more peace we have in our lives, I think the sure. more joy that becomes evident. Uh, you know, to those around us. So on to five, and then as you were saying earlier, Ben, he's, you know, he talks about our heavenly dwelling and this hands. Um, look at verse five, five, five. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come, like Romans 8, 11. Uh, uh, for this very purpose of the mortal being swallowed up, yeah. you know, by, by life. Uh, and that uh, beautiful passage at the end of 15, 1 Corinthians 15 on resurrection, that death will be swallowed up by victory and by life. Thank you. Same thing that Paul uses here. And I meant to say, I kept meaning to say, Paul's going to circle back around to this theme of our imperfections, uh, this earthen vessels in chapter 12, when he talks about uh, God saying, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So he's going to come back around to that theme. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think it's as loud for you. With We're, we're near the end of Ellington Field, so when the jets oh, when they take off, uh, <laughs> it can be, it, it rattles our windows sometimes. Wow. <laughs> Love it. I don't know if you can hear that at all. No. Oh, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> uh, six, therefore we're always confident and know that as long as we're at home in the body, we're we are away from the Lord, though not completely separated from the Lord. We have a spirit dwelling in us. We live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. uh, good for us to remember that during these, these mm -hmm. times that, yeah. that, our, that God you know, is not on lockdown or anything, that he is still at work through all of this. Um, any anything else and the difference here is that we're not listening through uh all of the the text as we would when we're in the classroom together uh anything in the first uh 10 verses that you had noted or you might have underlined <clears throat> almost got all 10 verses underlined <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, we'll spend a lot here 
uh, 11 and following. Um, and it really would help. Flora, if you wouldn't mind, would you, would you just read 11 to the end for us? Uh, sure. Um, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. And that's 11. To the end. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, that uh, was the end. Uh huh. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. Uh, yeah, that's where my 11 stopped. Oh, but I'm sorry. On through 21, through the end of the chapter. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Sure. For for we we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Uh, or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of God compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died and he died for all that those who should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is the new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. We reconcile, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin. Hallelujah. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there's just so much there in the Ministry of Reconciliation, 11 to the wow. end. Wow, yeah. Uh, and oh, yeah. I did a, a brief reflection on it in the Cross-Shaped God class because that was our verse, or part of that. Oh, yeah, it sure was. was our verse, uh, yeah, for week and, um, So briefly, I'll... I'll reflect on some things here and then uh, let you, I'm going to interject a thought, uh, I mean a piece of news from Nadine because I'm afraid if I don't, I will forget her text came in and uh, just uh, right before we met. And her oncologist said that she has ovarian cancer, uh, not lung cancer as they originally thought last week. Uh, so she says, you know, of course she had breast cancer and she said, I, you know, I will beat this one to tell my classmates I feel their prayers. Um, the Lord allows me to go through a mass to give me a message. And so um, just wanted to give you that update from Nadine and uh, let you keep her.